And so the first thing you need to know about fasting is that we fast always. We don't fast in January. We don't fast when church declares fasting. If church declares fasting, that is good. But whether they declare it or not, we live fasting. We live a fasted life. That's the secret of victory in this realm. Ask anybody making genuine impact. You can make impression and people will look at you and assume things are happening. Time will reveal that that thing is fake. If what you are doing is genuine, you must put fasting at the foundation. If it is not there, it will fail. Because Jesus himself told us that fasting is a compulsory part of our syllabus. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 17, he said, When thou fastest, and that word is numerous, because when he was teaching this, he was teaching it with prayer. When thou prayest, and when they asked him about prayer, he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And when he was praying, he said, Give us this day our daily bread. So if you eat bread daily, you pray daily. If you pray daily, then you fast daily. How do you fast? Number one, when you fast, basically fasting, like you know, is to starve yourself from distraction, including food, in order to seek God. That's what fasting is. Starve yourself of distractions, both illegitimate and legitimate distractions, in order to allow you time to seek God. So if you are not seeking God, you are not fasting. It could be a hunger strike. Are we together? But in addition to avoidance of such things, there are a few things that must be added to that starving process while you are here seeking God. And that's what I mean when I say, how do you fast? You fast with righteous living. If you are fasting and your life and your lifestyle is not consistent with the standard of righteousness, stop. You are wasting your time. God will reject you. So fasting is not just a time of avoiding food. It's actually a time of calling your attention to righteous and just living. Because it is that just living that validates that fast before God. Many persons are fasting, they are oppressing the house gear. The child is eating chicken, the house gear is drinking gary without sugar. You, you just went on hunger strike for 40 days. You didn't fast. Because that wicked act will make God abhor that you're fasting in this realm. Somebody is fasting and is suppressing his workers at work. Pay salary, you won't pay. You carry their money, you put in fixed deposit. You want to generate some quick interest. Why somebody's child is driven from school? Why somebody has no food to eat? And you come to church, you say, you are a spiritual person. They call you a woman of God. You say, bless you, bless you. <laughs> you are a wolf in sheep clothing. A wolf. You say you are fasting. Somebody is laboring, trying to make progress in life. And you are doing everything possible to stop that person. That is not fasting. Don't kill yourself. This is why many people have ulcer. Because the power of God does not come, the presence of God does not come to shield them. If you go hungry for a long time, it can kill you. The reason that hunger does not affect your system is because the presence of God comes to shield you. Why do you think Moses was able to stay without food and water for 40 days? It was because of the intensity of the presence of God. And so if you don't fast correctly, that excess hunger will trigger a negative reaction that will destroy you. But if you fast correctly, that fasting can become even of medicinal value. Isaiah 58 verse 3 to 6. New Living Translation. I want you to hear this thing. Let it sink. So you don't just know it, but you practice it. Get me the scripture quickly. Isaiah 58 verse 3 to 6. He said, we have fasted before you. Why aren't you impressed? They are asking God. We thought you said you love fasting. We have fasted. Why are you not impressed? We have been very hard on ourselves. Have you found some people who fast? They want to literally kill themselves. Because they think God is impressed when their leaves become dry like rock. If there's no righteousness, God won't see it. They say we have not just fasted, we were hard on ourselves. 
And he said, you don't even notice it. And God answered, I will tell you why. It's because you are fasting to pleasure yourself, to please yourself. How can you be hungry to please yourself? <laughs> when the spirit is talking, sometimes it's, it's difficult to understand. How can you be hard on yourself to please yourself? What kind of pleasing yourself is that? I thought when you want to please yourself, you look for a succulent environment that can create some form of massage and relaxation. How can you be hard on yourself? And you say it's pleasing yourself. But it's the spirit talking. He said, even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. So that fasting is wrong. You are fasting and you are oppressing your workers. Go to the next verse. He said, what good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? He said, this kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. If it's me you are trying to journey with, you have wasted your time. You will not go anywhere with me. Go next. He said, you humble yourself by going through the motion of penance. And I wish I had time to tell you about penance. What these people do when they are fasting. Some people will go barefooted and climb the mountain. Their whole leg will be full of blister. They are doing penance. Some is on their knees. And they will even be reciting some things. On their knees. And they will climb a mountain. The whole knee will be torn with blood. And then they hope God will see it and say, My daughter, my daughter, I have seen the way you've humbled yourself. <laughs> that is not the God of heaven. God actually acknowledged that they humbled themselves. They say you humbled yourselves by going through the motion of penance, bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. He said, you dress in burlap and cover yourself with ashes. That is the reputation. So they did everything right. He said, is this what you call fasting? Is it by pouring ashes on yourself? Is it by penance? Is it by humbling yourself? That's God talking. He said, do you really think this will please the Lord? Now go to the next verse. I'm showing you how to fast. Some people think fasting is just about avoiding food. And then they'll come and say, I didn't eat for the first 14 days. The next seven days, I drank only water. And then the last day, I, I didn't eat anything. God bless you. But God is not counting that yet until this is gotten. He said, no. This is the kind of fasting I want. He said, free those who are wrongly in prison. Lighten the burdens of those who work for you. He said, let the oppressed go free. Remove the chains that bind people. You can't claim you are fasting. You are pulling somebody down. You are destroying somebody. He said, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approved not. So if you don't want to waste your time, better eat healthy. Don't have kwashioko until you have done the right thing. How do you fast? You fast with prayers. Somebody is fasting, he is watching, he gathers all the seasonal movies. Thank God, it's a week of fasting. He's looking for what to do to cover time. Because after he prayed the third time, it was 10.40 a.m. And he's supposed to go up to 3 o'clock. Meanwhile, 12 is like Mount Everest. And so in order to journey to the top of the mountain without knowing, he is now at substituting another distraction with the distraction he took away in form of food. He will now go and gather prison break. He watched season one to season three, the first two days of the fast. The next four days, he goes to season 12. And then he will say, ah, we just canceled 14 days. Where? Are you going to Mount Zion or you are going to Hollywood? This is why people have ulcer fasting. Because they are not praying. They are not studying. In the New Testament, almost every time the word fasting is used, prayer is added. I just quoted for you Matthew 17, 21. This kind goeth not but by what? Prayer and fasting. When Jesus was teaching about fasting in Matthew 6, prayer was also taught there. You can't separate fasting from prayer. Because when a man fasts, he is trying to seek the face of God. And so the fasting separates him from worldly distraction. It is the prayer that carries him to the God realm. 
God does not move because you fast. You are the one who moves. And so if you separate yourself from food and you don't move in the direction of God through prayer, any other thing you do at that time, the impact will be stronger because at that time, your spirit is sensitive. If you watch a movie at that time, a demon of loss can enter you because your antenna is sharp. The moment you start fasting and mortifying the flesh, you will notice that spiritual sensitivity begins to increase. And so it is foolishness to fast without praying. Because when your antenna is sensitive, that's when you want to receive feedback. And so the second way to fast is to fast with prayer. If you know that your itinerary is too choked and you won't have time to pray, reschedule that fast. So you don't allow evil enter your soul. Your soul is porous when you fast. The reason you pray when you fast is because you want God to saturate you. If you don't give God time of prayer, something else can saturate you easily. And so fasting must be done with prayer. If there's no prayer, it's not fasting. It's hunger strike. And I can tell you, many people go on 40 days fast. All of the prayer they pray put together is not up to three hours. In a 40 days fasting, 40 days, they counted days, but they never struck chords in the spirit. And they come back and say they fasted for 40 days. No, you didn't. And so fasting must be done with prayer. When Jesus went to the wilderness to fast, in Matthew chapter 4, the Bible said he prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus didn't fast for 40 days. Jesus prayed and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. That's how it's done. Believers are marking time and not the spirit. And they say they are fasting. This is why you can't come out with the benefits of fasting. If you don't fast correctly, the guarantee of having benefit is not there. You can only receive the benefit of fasting when you fast correctly. Are we together? The third way to fast is to fast with genuine repentance. Jonah chapter 3 verse 5. When Jonah went with the message to Nineveh, the Bible said they tore their clothes, they poured ashes on their heads, and everybody from the king to all the citizens and the beasts in the land, he said they began to fast and to repent. He says, so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. And they turned to the Lord. If a man is not repenting, he's not yet fasting. Because fasting will provoke genuine repentance. This is why we encourage fasting. And if you want to fast correctly, you must fast with justice, you must fast with prayer and you must fast with repentance. If you begin to fast like this, then there are benefits.